Good evening, friends. Breaking news out of Lucen, Utah. Dylan Rounds was 19 years old back on Memorial Day, Saturday, May 28th of 2022, reported missing. His remains have been found today. This is a breaking news story broken by our good friend Nate Eaton from East Idaho News. His mom and his dad, Candace and Justin, have been vocal all over the media advocating for their son. If they weren't out there and speaking and shouting from the rooftops, I'm not sure this case gets solved. So I want to send prayers and my sincere condolences on behalf of Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace and the entire community to Candace Cooley, to his dad. Uh, they're going through it right now. They have their son. They have their baby. They are bringing their boy home thanks to a lot of hard work on their behalf, a lot of hard work by law enforcement, but also James Brenner, the alleged perpetrator. He worked with the police department, the investigators, the prosecuting attorneys, and cut a deal. I don't know what deal he cut, but he cut a deal and led them today, April 9th, 2024, almost two years later, to the remains, to the spot where his remains were dumped and left by this heinous criminal. Let's take a listen to our good friend, uh, Nate Eaton from East Idaho News. He broke the story. He's on the Chad Daybell uh, trial, which is starting tomorrow. So Nate is live right now, but Thank you, everybody, for being here. And here's what Nate reported just a short time ago. I'm Nate Eaton with EastTitleHoNews.com. We have some breaking news to bring you right now. The body of Dylan Rounds has been found. Dylan Rounds, his remains have been found in the remote area of Lucen, Utah. Dylan is the young 19-year-old who vanished over Memorial Day weekend back in 2022 he was a farmer. He moved to the desert town of Lucen, Utah, which is in northern Utah, kind of near the Nevada border, when he vanished. And his family tells me that this morning his remains were found near or in Lucen in a remote area. That's all the information that we have at the moment from his family. Of course, rounds had been missing since May of 2022. The 19-year-old spoke with his mother on the phone right before he vanished and his family has spent the past two years searching for answers. His mother, Candace Cooley, tells me that as part of a plea agreement with James Brenner, the man accused of killing Dylan, uh, Brenner led the investigators out to the site where the remains were on Tuesday morning, which would be today, in, in, uh, on April 9th, in case you're just tuning in um, or, or you're watching on another day. Uh, they got there, they found those remains, and they have been recovered. Now, Brenner is charged with aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body in connection to Round's death. Let me show you just how remote this area is. That's where Dylan was farming. That was his camper. That was his truck. And you can see there's not much around this area. Uh, it, 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 it really was a desolate, desolate area. James Brenner, this is the man who is facing those charges. Um, he, again, must have said something to investigators or cooperated or something. We don't have all of the details at this point, uh, but they they do have the remains because of, uh, of where James Brenner led them. This is a spot where James Brenner had his camper. He lived near Dylan Rounds out there. Both of them were in separate campers. And when, his, when Dylan's family went out to begin looking for him in late May of 2022, they found his boots right there behind that mound of dirt, which was some distance off. And there was also a shed right by James, Brenner, James Brenner's camper. This is what that shed looked like. And within a few days of Dylan disappearing, James Brenner cleaned that shed to the to the point of how it looks now, you know, it doesn't look very clean, maybe to some of us, but he did remove bags out of that shed, according to Dylan's family. And he did take those to a, uh, an undisclosed location. And so all of this would, would likely have come into play if 
if there was a trial, it still could as far as evidence. Uh, but as I mentioned, I just want to also stop it here uh, because this is the this is the shed, the grain shed um, that Dylan was supposed to be pulling the truck into so the seed wouldn't get wet. But this is also the location where um, the Dylan's parents did an interview uh, a, a quite some time back with the Diesel brothers. Um, and so this is a familiar location, but um, Nate is covering all aspects of this. And I'm going to go into some of the late, the reporting that was uh, going on six months ago. And about a year ago, James Brenner was charged with various crimes, uh, aggravated murder and abuse of a corpse. There was no arraignment. And Candace was so, so frustrated about it. She voiced her opinion continuously. She was shouting from the rooftops. Why aren't they doing anything and proceeding forward with this case? Um, maybe now we know possibly a little bit why, but still, we're going to hear from Candace and we're going to hear what she had to say along the way. She's been on this show many times. She's, I've had her, her um, D Dylan's father. I've, ha I've had Dustin on here and, and, and Candace many a times. And as you know, there was a whole Jagaloon um, brigade that followed this case and it was ugly but we kept it classy and we kept it right straight to the point and the point was finding dylan rounds and here we are today his remains are recovered uh and now the family could lay him to rest according to dylan's family as part of some sort of plea deal his family and he did take those to a uh an undisclosed location and so all of this would would likely have come into play if if there was a trial it still could as far as evidence uh, but as i mentioned according to dylan's family as part of some sort of plea deal brenner took the authorities to the area where dylan's body was and they were able to find it i spoke with dylan's family they of course are a lot of emotions tonight this has been a, um such a mystery since for two years now, but Candace did ask me to uh, convey, we thank everyone for their support and love. We are grateful we now have Dylan's body and can bring him home as we continue our fight for justice. Now, I want to say something. Uh, I'm going to put myself back on here for a second. Uh, Nate Eaton has been very close with the family. I reached out also to Candace and sent her a message. Didn't expect a response, but that is classy right there. She in her statement of finding her son's remains, she thanked us, the community, the people who have helped her along the way, the ladies, the gentlemen, the people who sent flyers, that started Facebook groups, that talked about Dylan. And this right here is an, this is an unbelievable give back by Candace and, and, and showing her 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 how grateful she's showing all of us here in a very, very difficult moment. And I want to play it back again because this was, this was great to hear. And kudos to Candace and her whole family. You know, I, I've, I've spoken with um, her mom and, and, and other family members over the course of time privately and never spoke about it. But they are very, a very, very good family. So um, despite all the craziness that's been spread out there and put out all over the internet, they're really good people. And this, you wouldn't wish this on your worst enemy to have your son uh, murdered in the middle of, um, in the middle of his farm out, out in the desert in Luton, Luton, Utah. Um, so let's take a listen again. Um, this was definitely a moving, moving statement. It's a mystery since, for two years now, but Candace did ask me to uh, convey, we thank everyone for their support and love. We are grateful we now have Dylan's body and can bring him home as we continue our fight for justice. And uh, unclear when Mr. Brenner will appear in court again. There was a hearing scheduled for this month, but at last check that was delayed. Uh, however, now with the recovery of Dylan's body, it, it could it could be had sooner rather than later. I want to show you on a map just where this place is because it's desolate. And when I say this place, I don't mean where Dylan. 
All right. So he's going to go over a map, you know, Google Earth. We've done this. We've done this mapping here. But this is going to give you a good idea of the landmass and, and again, how hard it was for groups like Equisearch, the Diesel Brothers, and many others who were out there night and day searching for him. There were some people that went on, on a daily search for Dylan Rounds for a long, long time. This just gives you a, a great idea of how desolate this area is and how difficult this terrain is to search. Dylan's remains were actually found other than it was in the Lucin area, but that's a very large area. Uh, but this is where Lucin is. If you pull out here, you can see the Nevada, Utah uh, um, border right here on the left of your screen. And then over here is Montello, Nevada. Dylan went back and forth between Montello and Lucin quite a bit. This was another, if you want to say big town, it's not real big, but the closest nearest town uh, to to where Lucin is. So he went back and forth between these two places. And in the early stages of the investigation, uh, there was a lot of, of look, a lot of focus on Montello. And then it seemed to shift into Lucin. Uh, I don't even know if there's a population count for Lucin, but if we they do have an airport, as you can see. Lucin, the, popula the population is 50. I have it written down. There's 50 residents in Lucin, Utah. If we zoom out quite a bit more, this will give you a reference as far as where this is located. So over here is Tremont in Utah, Brigham City, Malad is here, Lava Hot Springs, Blackfoot, Shelley. So it's right over here. And uh, it's it's quite quite a distance if you were to fly from Idaho Falls, or start, excuse me, if you were to drive from Idaho Falls down to Lucin. But this is where his body was found. And this is where family uh, are breathing a, a sigh of relief now that his his remains have been found. So there still are a lot of questions. There still are um, some court stuff to obviously get worked out, to get solved, to get taken care of. This has been a case we've covered extensively on East Idaho News since Dylan vanished. Um, in fact, here was a picture just at CrimeCon last year. They put up a Have You Seen Me poster with all of these uh, nice messages around them. Uh, keep fighting. Love how his parents represent him. We will find you, Dylan. Uh, hold on to hope. And then there's these wonderful photos that his mother has shared with us uh, and on publicly on social media. There's little Dylan as a young boy feeding pigs. There he is on a tractor. He loved, loved, loved farming, was big into farming, big into the outdoors, fishing. There he is. Um, I don't know if he's taking care of a sheep there. It looks like he might be. And here he is on a tractor, which, again, he loved to farm. And that's what took him out to that location so that he could begin farming. He was raised in eastern Idaho. His father is still in eastern Idaho, Justin Rounds. And um, tonight, again, they have the answer they've been waiting for. They have recovered Dylan Round's body. We will continue to follow this story uh, and bring you the latest developments. We have reached out to the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office to see if they have any, uh, any um, comment. What usually happens in these types of cases is they, do, they cannot confirm right away 100% like and I want to tell you something uh, also to two folks. Box Elder is the lead um, in this in this case, the sheriff's office. Uh, as you remember, Sheriff Potter was um, one of the good guys who was kept in touch um, uh, with the family. Um, so Box Elder has their hands full right now. And what they need to do is have these remains. And, and when I spoke with Ed Wallace, um, you know, Ed is going to join us in a few minutes. He's in the airport. He's getting ready to fly out of the country. But Ed called me as soon as the news broke and as soon as I shared it with him. And, and, and he, he said, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. They need to do um, a lot of uh, analysis of the remains. So remember, it's not a body that they recovered. It's a skeletal remains. And I, I don't mean to be insensitive here, but that's what they're working with. So dental, we're going to have a forensic odontologist, a dental expert who's going to look at those remains, and you're going to have a forensic anthropologist, and the anthropologist look at the study of the bones. This way they can de determine exactly what happened to them. And I know that James Brenner has admitted to a couple of things, and there's some cell phone footage on Dylan's phone, and we'll get into that at the appropriate time. 
But um, I have in the waiting room here, Twyla, as soon as she gives me the thumbs up, I'll add her in. Twyla Cisco to search coordinator for EquiSearch Midwest. She went out to Lucen, Utah um, with the crew, with the team. And um, she spent quite a bit of time searching this terrain and searching for Dylan Rounds at the family's request, at the approval of box elder uh, sheriffs. Um, as we know, EquiSearch doesn't just go out there and insert themselves. So uh, waiting here um, live, and she, you know, once this news broke, I, I talked with Twyla. He was like, I'm, I'm here, I'm coming on. So um, Twyla, thank you for joining. I wanted to get your thoughts real quick and thank you for your search efforts for uh, Dylan Rounds and his family. I'll tell you what, it was, it was a team effort. Uh, it's really sad because, look, I'm not going to cry, but if Candace and Justin and the rest of their families on here, uh, me, my team, everybody, you know, we give our condolences. Um, we do know that y'all are happy that he has finally been recovered to get some closure and to bring him home. To be honest with you, I'm kind of speechless. Um, I'll never forget when we went, we was out there for a week. We stayed on his property and campers. Candace and Justin, they brung us in as if we were their family. I mean, we went in and met them, didn't, didn't know them from nowhere, and we met them, and they treated us like we were family. And, dude, Ron, I'm so, like, my heart aches for them. My heart truly aches for them because – they never give up. They never give up. You know, I, I've been in contact with Justin here and there, here and there. And I know Candace stays busy. Um, when when we found out and you let me know, I was like, what? Um, we hope and pray that, you know, they get the answers and everything that they need. Uh, I'm all over the place because I'm sad. Well, I'm well, I, see, I see how emotional you are. Yeah, and this, this goes to show people that are watching – these Twyla and the, and the team, they're not robots, they're human beings. So emotions run high. She got on a plane or however you got to Utah. They don't know if you drove or you got on a plane, but she went there for a, a decent period of time and searched. I was in contact with them and, you know, you were sending me pictures and things of that nature that I never shared online or with anybody, but these guys were searching in such a remote areas that you get, emotionally attached to this stuff and and justin J dylan's father she, he came on to my show because of you because he knew that you know you were attached to uh me and i was attached to you guys um and and having the family on the show to give our viewing audience a good idea of what they were going through and the and the trials and tribulations like you got to break bread with them and eat and sit down and talk to them uh, most don't get a chance to do that but this is bittersweet because this is what you go out there and you do the searches for lost is not alone is, is not just a, it's just not just a statement that doesn't mean anything that comes into play here because now he is reunited with his family and they can lay him to rest and give him a proper burial burial and have a place where they know their son's remains are. And that means a lot. Not many families get the chance to have this happen. So there, the emotions are high. And, and Twyla, I have to say thank you and on behalf of everybody that's watching and everybody that will watch this replay. Thank you for what EquiSearch does. You guys are heroes in my mind, heroes in my eyes. You know, uh, it's it's always hard to, like sometimes when when people say, thank you for what you do, like you just don't know you don't know how to take that because, you know, people shouldn't have to thank us for going out there in their time of need like this to try to find their loved one that's just been discarded like garbage. You know, Dylan didn't deserve this at all. I may not have ever met Dylan, but I felt Dylan through his family, if that makes sense at all. Yes, it does. It makes a lot of sense, Twyla. And, you know, again, Kansas has been a warrior and has been so vocal, you know, uh, as she has taken to the airwaves to fight for justice for her son. I mean, they knew for such a long time that James Brenner was the perpetrator that 
perpetrated this crime against their son, murder. Uh, he stands charged with aggravated murder and abuse of a body, abuse of a corpse. Um, James Brenner has been charged, but was never arraigned on the charges. I, I would assume that we're going to see upgraded charges. And again, a lot of things will happen rolling forward. Can, um, do you have a minute to hang out with us? Because I want to play a clip from CrimeCon. Uh, Candace, it's just a minute or two. Candace gave an interview with Nate Eaton, and this is just six months ago. And listen to how fiery she is in this interview and how focused she is. And, and she I never, like she never, ever gave up. And then when we were there, we went to bed late. And I, I, to be honest with you, I don't even think the woman hardly slept at all while we were there. She was up early you know, before the sun even came out to make sure we had breakfast, even though we was like, you know, we don't need none of that. And she stood true to her word and said that she will never stop and she will stick with what she knows. And she did. And, and she's got her son back home. Yeah. And Twyla, you, I, I wish I could reach to the phone and hug you because I know that you, you, th these emotions are things that you guys hold in a lot because you you have to be strong when you're out there searching for these folks but this is the result of human nature you are a human being and and it's just normal to get upset like this so i love you and i thank you and i want you to hang out here because i want to play this clip for everybody and give us a chance to kind of get our thoughts back together this is candace cooley just six months ago with nate eaton at, on location at crime con and she talks about other people not getting attention and how she's trying to fight for other families as well as she's looking for her son. All right, we are backstage at Crime Con and probably Hi. one of the people I know best here, unfortunately, <laughs> but in a, I guess fortunately, unfortunately, yeah. Candace Cooley is here. Uh, Candace, why are you here at Crime Con? Uh, we are here to bring awareness for Dylan's case and keep pushing forward, um, try to help other families. We've met an amazing group of people that there's so many stories like Dylan's that uh, haven't got any attention. I mean, Dylan's got some, but not what it should have. But there's some people fighting that they get nothing. And we want to bring the awareness and try to help these people uh, get some help. Now, I think that that statement right there goes to show and prove what kind of a person she really is. Because if she was just all about her son, she would never have said that. And it wasn't just because she was at Crime Con. Um, she made the trip over to Crime Con and... and um, you know, made that statement on camera, uh, and and I believe, um, you know, that I know her well enough where I could say he reaches her hand out to help others, um, and that's a fact. And I know she'll continue to do that uh, going forward. Yeah, is there anything new that you can tell our audience? So as of right now, we're waiting for a hearing on October 2nd. Um, we honestly don't know what this hearing is going to be. Um, our frustration is mounting again because... We understand that our justice system is slow, but we have had charges since March and we have not even had an arraignment. And that's just unheard of. Are you given any reasonings as to why? Everything right now has been attorney issue. I mean, every hearing we've had has had to do with attorneys and uh, the state of Utah actually appointed Brenner two attorneys, which he's not entitled to because it's not a death penalty case and it's not capital murder. One of the hearings, I don't know if that's the one you were at, when they were confused as to how many attorneys he got, and that was the whole hearing. And then they appointed him another one a week later. Uh, that's it. That's all it's been is attorney confusion. Any uh, progress on finding Dylan? No. No. We've done specialized searches all summer. Um, we've had heavy equipment out. We've had our canine team back out. Um, we're focusing on the area that Dylan's RTT data was in that day because – that's what we have. That's all we have to go off of. And so, you know, people ask us all the time, what's new with the search? And we've really kept everything we're doing private because of how much craziness there has been and people coming out. And so we just, we're out there and we're looking, but we're keeping it to our private groups right now. All right. Well, as I mentioned, we are here. And that was an important part, Twyla, is that she wanted to keep stuff close to the vest because she didn't want to jeopardize uh, a lot of the things that she knew, a lot of things that they knew. Uh, and I know when you guys went out there searching and you know, your mic's uh, muted. I know you have it for a reason. Um, but when you went out there searching, you guys 
definitely debriefed with her and I'm sure with her, um, with Dylan's dad. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the things that you concentrated on and without going into details? Like how difficult was that lay of the land to search and what was the thought processes of things to clear? Like, where did you start? Because when I look at this thing from a, a map at Google Earth or to overview shot, it's mind boggling how much is there. But, you know, focusing on ground zero where his where his trailer was and where everything happened, where the boots were left. I'm sure that you guys did unbelievable amount of searching around there. Can you talk a little bit about that, Twyla? Um, I can. I actually sent you some pictures that uh, one of the drone pilots had that he sent me before I came on, and you can show those pictures if you want. Um, we we tried to go any and everywhere that Candace wanted us to go. We basically asked her, where would you like us to search? And wherever she said that she wanted us to search, we went. We went to the wash. We went to, we were in his grain shed. We were all on his property. We was flying the drones. I We had probably over 10,000 or more images, you know, and Candace seen them. She, I sat at the table with her in the camper and we would go over these images. And then when we go out and try to find targets, um, it's so strange because the whole week we were there, we didn't see many trees. I sent you a picture of the actual pond uh, that everybody kept talking about. Um, it's most definitely a different type of terrain. We went to the salt flats. It, there's so much land there. I, I mean, you would have to search every single day for probably a year or longer to actually cover all that property and all that land that's out there it's wide open it's it's something that i'll never forget uh but we tried to basically go anywhere that candace wanted us to go um based off of any information that she had and then we tried to go anywhere that justin wanted us to go at um you know they were out there her and Justin. you were there a whole week seven days or five days we were out there i think it was maybe seven days a week or I know it was Monday through Friday for sure. I can't even remember what day we went in, but we did fly in. Um, we had to get a rental car. We took our bags and we, we left, we stayed in a camper on, on Dylan's property over there. Um, the drone pilots had their camper. I had mine and Candace and her husband stayed in the camper there with us. Um, I, I think I sent you pictures a while back, but I'm going to look at the pictures. I'm going to put them up in a minute. Hey, I just want to just say everybody who's joining late, this is breaking news. Dylan Rounds uh, remains have been recovered as of today, April 9th. Uh, James Brenner, the suspect that's in custody, charged with aggravated murder of Dylan Rounds, abuse of a corpse, abuse of a body. Um, he brokered a deal as per uh, Candace Cooley and... Um, East Idaho News reporting he brokered a deal with the district attorney's office and investigators to go out, I believe, today. He went out uh, under the supervision, obviously, of the Department of Corrections with the Box Elder County Sheriff's and district attorney squad and led them to the exact location where he discarded Dylan Round's remains. So his remains have been recovered uh, bittersweet for the family. This is a two year, almost two years. It's coming up Memorial Day weekend, May 28th of 2022. We're just two shy months from that um, two year mark. Uh, Twyla is the search coordinator from Equisearch. She searched for Dylan Rounds and has been in close contact with the family over the course of time. I'm going to show these pictures. Um, let me just see if I can get that up on the screen. Let's see if I could do anything to make this bigger. What are we looking at here, Twyla? Um, that's one of the areas that we, me and the drone pilots was in. Um, we probably got a, a, a target from Locate and decided to go out and, and check to see what that target is. And it, that looks like they took a picture of me out there checking it. Yeah, it's like a wheelbarrow and a bunch of stuff that was like, strewn about. And it looked like there's some stuff up here in the, Forefront. Oh, yeah. There was there was an area that was so weird. I can't even explain to you how weird it was. And it was like these people were living in a camper and they just up and left. 
everything and it was just so weird and you can see you could see there's no trees yeah there's nothing it's like tumbleweed here it looks like yeah yeah and that other well, picture one, of the, that one of the viewers eileen says thank you twyla for coming on and showing your compassion yes twyla is a human being she's a mother she's a great human being she's a great great friend uh but most importantly she searches for the missing and she does it on her own time she volunteers she does not does not i repeat does not get paid to do this she does this on her own time and that's what makes her something special so i love twyla and i always will um what are we looking at here it hurts when we when we get these cases and we're in contact with the family and stuff like that they become they become our family they become a part of us and it's not just oh let's go work this and then be done with it i mean it sticks here and it sticks here and the things that you see it never leaves here and believe me it's not easy we we're just human like you said and it, it does hurt it does hurt tremendously even though you know we should feel relieved and happy that he's been recovered and he's home with his family but it, it still hurts for them it hurts. You know? it hurts yeah it hurts listen there's no there, there's no way getting around that it hurts and 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 again you're 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 tied to this family for life you know and it's 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 sad somebody said in the chat i don't believe he's been charged yes he has been charged they just did not arraign him on those charges his two charges aggravated murder not these are over a year, almost a year ago, he was charged, James Brenner, charged with aggravated murder and abuse of a body, abuse of a corpse. Uh, let's look at the second image that I have up, Amp EV2. Thank you for that message, and thank you to the Super Chatters. We're going to get to your comments and questions. Rocky Pastorino, thank you for being here, keeping it classy. Thank you for becoming a member. Rocky, thank you for sending out some super sticker love. Thank you, uh, Michael Joseph Murray. All right. So, Twyla, what do what do we got here? What are we looking at here, young lady? This looks like a camper. Is this still? Is this still? Just a little bit, so I could see what that is. I okay. know that I see campers. I can't tell if that's where we stayed or if that's something that we searched. That's the best I can do right there. Uh, I, some graffiti on it, a blue like graffiti on the side here, or some oh kind no, of. Oh no! So that was it. That may not be where we stayed because the. The, where we stayed, there was three campers, uh, mine, yeah. the drone pilots, and Candace Nims, and it was like in a U-shape. So that's an area, as a matter of fact, it's the area that I was just speaking to y'all about. That area there was over in the Salt Flats, and it was just unbelievably crazy. I think that's it. I, or it right. could be Dylan's. I can't really tell. Yeah, it, I can it, tell it from like the stuff maybe. there, maybe. Yeah, it may be because I see some stuff, but it, let's see if there's a different shot. Oh no, who's this? Tony walking out in the fields? I, I think so. That was Tony. I mean, you see, there's no trees. There's no trees at all there. And you can see that there's little tire marks down beside. He was probably checking those tire marks or whatever, even though we right. went after the fact. Yep. You guys were being thorough about everything that you were doing there, and you had nothing but time on your hands because you were there for a full week. Uh, what is this here that we're looking at? It looks like a mountain. That's what that is, and I can't remember if what, that was on top of the wash or if it was while we were traveling, and maybe we was taking pictures of the clouds. But that's what it looks like out there. Those tumbleweed things—they're everywhere. Like you don't right. once you hit that one area to get back to where Dylan's property is, there's no trees, but the one by the pond that I seen, and it's just so much, so much land. Right. Yeah, but it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful what Dylan was over there trying to do. As a matter of fact, when we were leaving out of there, I think some of the crops or something may have started to grow or something. And I think that um, Dylan's grandmother may have got some for Candace, or Candace got some. Is so much going on up here. I, it's all I, I understand. I understand. We got Ed Wallace waiting in the waiting room, so I'm going to wait for him to come back. But while we're waiting. Just to recap for some of the people who are just joining, Dylan Rounds, his remains were found today at um, uh, at, at a remote location in Lucen, Utah. They didn't tell us exactly where, but James Brenner, the suspect, the only suspect in the murder of Dylan Rounds, he's charged with aggravated murder and abuse of a corpse. 
um, he led investigators today in a in a deal that he brokered as per uh, Candace Cooley and uh, East Idaho News. So let's take a listen. This is only a couple of minutes. I'm going to play of this. I'm Nate Eaton with EastIdahoNews.com. We have some breaking news to bring you right now. The body of Dylan Rounds has been found. Dylan Rounds, his remains have been found in the remote area of Lucen, Utah. Dylan is the young 19-year-old who vanished over Memorial Day weekend back in 2022. He was a farmer. He moved to the desert town of Lucen, Utah, which is in northern Utah, kind of near the Nevada border, when he vanished. And his family tells me that this morning, his remains were found near or in Lucen in a remote area. That's all the information that we have at the moment from his family. Of course, Rounds had been missing since May of 2022. The 19-year-old spoke with his mother on the phone right before he vanished, and his family has spent the past two years searching for answers. His mother... Let's light the chat up with uh, sunflowers for Dylan. I want to see this chat flooded with sunflowers for Dylan Rounds. There was that campaign on his uh, birthday to plant these sunflower seeds, and I might have the date. Maybe it wasn't his birthday. Maybe it was an, a, a one-year mark. Um, but I remember that campaign. I remember it well. So let's light the chat up with sunflowers for Dylan Rounds and his family. His family has spent the past two years searching for answers. His mother, Candace Cooley, tells me that as part of a plea agreement with James Brenner, the man accused of killing Dylan, uh, Brenner led the investigators out to the site where the remains were on Tuesday morning, which would be today, in, in, uh, on April 9th, in case you're just tuning in. Keep it going, um, folks. Or, or you're watching on another day. Uh, they got there, they found those remains, and they have been recovered. Now, Brenner is charged with aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body in connection to Round's death. Let me show you just how remote this area is. That's where Dylan was farming. That was his camper. That was his truck. And you can see there's not much around this area. Uh, it, 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 it really was a desolate, desolate area. James Brenner, this is the man who is facing those charges. So there it is. There's the face of evil. This is the man who's facing the charges. Um, the only person that is facing charges. Again, Dylan Rounds had a cell phone video that he either he took or somehow it went off his phone. Ed Wallace is going to join us to talk about some of the forensics of this. But thank you for continually lighting this chat up with these beautiful sunflowers for Dylan Rounds. area. James Brenner, this is the man who is facing those charges. Um, he again, must have said something to investigators or cooperated or something. We don't have all of the details at this point. Uh, all right. I'm going to, I'm going to bring Ed in because I don't want to waste any time here. Um, Twyla, what do you got? What are you showing on there? Um, so when we were out searching, you know, if you were in Dylan Round's group, Candace, bless her heart, while we were out searching, if she was, if we were taking lunch or taking break, she had her little bead things out on the tailgate of the truck making bracelets for people. Uh, she literally made these bracelets. This is how small the little thing was that she was putting on, or keychains, bracelets, all kinds of stuff. But this little thing here was like a little keychain, and she was sitting there putting these sunflowers. Oh, look at These that. tractors. This is all from Candace Cooley. And these little sunflowers on these little keychains and bracelets. Wow. And then they have, then she had these beads. These are the ones that Candace gave me. I was sitting there helping her make some of them. You can't really tell, but it has sunflowers. It's a white bead. They kind of feel like glass and they have sunflowers on them. I see it. And then there's this one more tiny, tiny, tiny little thing. And they were, I believe, some was flowers and some was um, little bumblebees. It's so tiny, you can't barely hold it. This one is a sunflower seed, or a sunflower. Oh, wow. 
It's all got meaning. It's all got meaning, and you saved it all. Listen, we got Ed. He's traveling out of the country, and I want to bring him in. Um, keep, keep that little good. I want you to show the rest of him when we come back. Look okay. at that. She's got a whole bag of stuff. Uh, Ed Wallace joining us from um, JFK. Thank you for coming in, Ed. Uh, news that we've all been wanting to hear for the family for closure. Dylan Rounds remains recovered. Your thoughts, Ed? Well, it's, it, it's a good day for the uh, Round family. Um, a sad but good day. Uh, now at least they have Dylan and they can give him a proper burial. You know, I'm sure they have to go to the, um, to the uh, medical examiner's office for uh, the examination and confirm the identification. But, uh, you know, we know who it is. Uh, he led them to the body. And kudos to Candace for her dogged tenacity um, to get here today. I don't think we would be here today without her. And kudos to those who uh, helped her and uh, believed in her cause, uh, whether that be uh, professional or volunteers. Um, it, you know, finally an outcome in, you know, I know they made a plea deal. I just don't, we just don't know what it is and how much, uh, you know, maybe the death penalty was taken off the plate and you know, get life in prison. I, yeah. I don't think the death penalty was on the plate. Cause I checked into that. I looked at some older videos, but I could be wrong. But as per the reports, there was no death penalty. It, this the, He was not being charged under capital murder charges. It was aggravated uh, murder and abuse of a corpse. And in Utah, that doesn't qualify. But you know what I want to add to what you just said, Ed? You know, kudos, and I said it earlier, too, because you and I talked about this, but kudos to everybody who helped Candace. And I mean this. I mean it. People who posted pictures, who re, who shared live streams. But shame on the people who dogged this family in a time of need. These are the people who should be ashamed of themselves now looking at this. His remains are now recovered, and the family has some, if you want to call it some bit of, um, I don't even like to call it closure, but some bit of now they're complete. They can now say I've brought my son home. But prior to this, this family took a beating and it was so cringe and it was so horrible. The people who were involved in bad, um, you know, saying bad things about this family in their times of need. I have to say to you people, you all would be ashamed of yourselves. So, I, I mean, I know there's a time and place for everything, but I had to put it out there because the, the amount of disgust that went on yeah. are circulating around this case. And Ed, you know it, Twyla, mm -hmm. I know you have to get into this stuff, but you, we're all, all of us. I 100% agree with you, Ron. There is no such thing as closure. They, they just learn to live with this. But, um, you know, they, they poked a mama bear and mama bear fought back and, and she got the results that, she, yeah, it maybe took a long time coming, but it's here and, and she has Dylan back and he's going to rest in peace now, be given a proper burial and so forth. I talked about the forensic odontologist. If you can maybe just explain, because some people want to know what is the process now. I spoke about the forensic anthropologist, but I didn't go into any details about it. Um, what in in a case like this, it's two years, Ed, almost yeah. which two months shy of two years, um, May 28th of uh, 2022. Um, what's the process on this identification at the medical examiner's office at this time? So they'll get antimodem. Um, x-rays from uh, Dylan's uh, dentist and compared to postmortem x-rays taken of uh, Dylan's dentures and do the comparison that way. They'll also probably pull a tooth and extract the pulp to extract the DNA. And um, then they'll get an exemplar of Dylan's DNA, that, which they probably have already, and, um, and compare the profile of the uh, antimodem DNA with the postmodem DNA from the tooth pulp. It's a tough conversation to have, but that is part of the steps of the process of bringing justice and making that positive identification. Because without that positive ID, um, it, it changes a little bit of the landscape. It doesn't mean that James Brenner's charges still wouldn't stick without the, you know, we've seen, you know, many prosecutions, the boys in California, um, many cases we've covered with no body 
Harmony Montgomery. Um, this just helps. This just helps with the prosecution. And it's a good day for the Cooley and the Rounds family. Um, I, I, Twilight, I took you off because I saw you, 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 you had shut off your camera. Um, and I did mute you because you were, Ed's audio was coming through on you. Um, I, I want to go to the chat if there's any questions. Hashtag Ed, hashtag Twyla, hashtag Duty Ron. But let me play, Ed, do you have a couple of minutes or do you are you in a rush? No, I got a few more minutes and then I have to get off. Okay, so then I won't play this. Um, any, anything else that you might want to add to this before you travel? And, and obviously, we all wish you a safe travel. You've got a long way to go to get to where you got to be. Um, yes, so wishing, yeah, wishing you safe travels. Uh, anything Thank that you want to add? Well, you know, again, I would just want to re reiterate what you said for the, for all of those heinous people that were attacking Candace um, for her uh, persistence in this matter and um, pushing authorities uh, to do what needed to be done. Shame on you, okay? And um, for all our 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 true crime family here, and this is how uh, a, a mother um, missing a child acts, okay? Um, unlike some of the cases that we all know of uh, where we don't see um, this. Yeah, well said, Ed, because I've heard you say that uh, on previous live streams. And, you know, you brought up a lot of good points because Candace, uh, although she was sometimes rough and abrasive, this is her son she's talking about here. So it didn't matter about how she came off. She was not concerned about how she came off in, in the media or in her, her interviews. She wanted the the police department she was pissed with the the response and the answers that she was getting and like you said somebody pissed off the mama bear and you know kudos to her for shouting from the rooftops and not being quiet when you had sheriffs wives and all different kinds of craziness going on behind the scenes and the thing of it is is that until you're thrust into a situation like this, and I hope and pray, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. Until you're thrust into a, a position like this, you don't know how you're going to act. But I would tell you this, anybody, like you said, Ed, anybody who really has a deep care and a deep love for their family member, they're going to do this. Just the same way you went racing out to the hospital for your mom uh, when things weren't going uh, to up to what you thought was right, you went out there and you advocated for your mom, just the same way I did for my family and I would do for this true crime family that we have here. And I want to also, like you just said, I want to piggyback on what you said. Kudos to all the people that are here in this community who respected Candace. And even at times when there was questions and the questionable things and questionable whatever, kudos to all the people who held back and said, you know what? I'm just going to respect this family. So I really want to tip my cap to the crime time with duty Ron and Ed Wallace family and the people who were really um, classy about this. And, you know, I know Mike King has been uh, interviewing and doing stuff and, and did a lot on this case. I want to get him and, and grab him one night this week and we'll have a conversation. I'll invite profiling evils, Mike King on with us. And hopefully you can join us too, Ed, um, because I know you're 12 hours behind, right? Or ahead. Or ahead. 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 ahead, yep, twelve hours ahead. Uh, I don't know if you were listening before, but Twyla came on and she got a bit emotional. You know, she spent the whole week out there searching in the desert yep. for Dylan. Uh, any yep. any words for Twyla on going through this? Just stay strong, Twyla. Just remember all the work you do and how, how many people you've helped. Uh, I know you keep uh, that in your heart with you. You take it with you. Um, but uh, if you ever need to talk. Uh, it, there's no there's no shame in um, reaching out to anybody and, and um, unloading uh, all that uh, that you're carrying. I really appreciate it. I just wish that I could reach to the phone and hug the Duty Ron family and Candace and Justin and and you know most of all my my teammates because I know if it's hurting me, it's hurting them. Mm -hmm. But just remember all the good that you've done here and the, and the help that you gave this family. And you were a part of that team of volunteers that went out there uh, on your own dime and time and, and did this great work uh, for that family. And I'm sure they're very appreciative of it. Thank you. Amen to that. And listen, Twyla, if you if you got to go, I understand. Um, I just have a couple more things that I want to go over with before I close up. But if you want to stay, I'd love to have you stay. I know, Ed, you got to run. 
I but gotta listen, go. Have a safe trip, and um, I'll I'll talk to you when you uh, when you got uh, when you got when you're on right. safe when you land. I'll talk to you soon, Ed. All right, thank you, guys. Take All care. Right, here it goes, Ed Wallace. Um, Twyla, I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. I'm going to play a little bit of this clip here. I'm going to finish this. Um, again, this is the Nate Eaton, East Idaho News. He broke this story just a few short hours ago. So let's take a look at this. Is, that's where Dylan was farming. That was his camper. That was his truck. And you can see there's not much around this area. Uh, it, 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 it really was a desolate, desolate area. James Brenner, this is the man who is facing those charges. Um, he, again, must have said something to investigators or cooperated or something. We don't have all of the details at this point, uh, but they they do have the remains because of, uh, of where James Brenner led them. This is a spot where James Brenner had his camper. He lived near Dylan Rounds out there. Both of them were in separate. Remember, he's he Nate is reporting this as his camper, but James Brenner was a squatter on that in on that site. And that was not, he did not own that camper. He was, according to Candace and I, you know, and 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 extended family members that I spoke to, James Brenner was squatting in that camper. That was not his. He he just occupied it. Campers. And when his when Dylan's family went out to begin looking for him in late May of 2022, they found his boots right there behind that mound of dirt, which was some distance off. And there was also a shed right by James Brenner, James Brenner's camper. This is what that shed looked like. And within a few days of Dylan disappearing. Twyla, did you guys go into that shed? Uh, yes, we went into that shed and we checked everything in that shed. As a matter of fact, that pole that's there, um, on, on the screen here to the left, um, go over just a little where that white thing is there, that white tarp right there on that pole. I actually left a bracelet, uh, Equisearch's bracelet and Justin was like, that bracelet will stay there. And then we also left a bracelet in his tractor. But we were in that shed, you know. Um, we were in a camper over there that Brenner had his belongings in. And it was just it was just disgusting what he went over there and did to Dylan's property. It was, and you know, there had been so many people on that property before we got there. You could tell it, it was just awful. But yes, we was most definitely in that shed. Yeah, it's a shame that a lot of people went and started gawking and looking around. Nobody should have went anywhere near any of that stuff. But, it, it, but you, in, a, in a remote location like that, how do you mark something like that off? It's, it wasn't pretend, It wasn't officially determined as a crime scene when, in fact, it was. Um, we don't know exactly where this crime took place, but we know it's in and around this area. Um, so only, only James Brenner knows, and we have to rely on him to be honest and tell us. So, um, and it, you know, duty Ron, not to interrupt you, but you can I see the pain. I could see the pain in Candace and Justin's face. I mean, there was, there was one night that I know for sure that when Justin left us over there at the campers with Candace, the next morning he came back and he had actually slept over there in his truck in front of that shed. Um, it's just crazy. It's mind blowing. And, you know, I, I'm thinking back of being over there and seeing Brenner's clothing and this, that, and the other for him to be able to go and do something as awful as he's done to this child. And it's just, it's awful. Let's take a look at the chat. I agree. It is the, the, the this whole situation. This has been two years of really hell for this family. Um, but the whole situation with the location of where this occurred and the the buffoonery that took place and 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 I have notes here. I have a whole file. I have a whole case file on this. People were calling in that Dylan was being held hostage at one point. I don't I don't know if you remember that, but I certainly do. This family has been put through the ringer, run over the coals, and um, you know there's there's so many horrible people out there that should be again ashamed of themselves, and I, and I say that with extreme conviction, and and I'm just so 
proud and happy that this community continued to honor and respect not only Dylan, the decedent here, uh, but his entire family. So uh, kudos again to you guys. Let's go to the chat, hashtag duty Ron, hashtag uh, Twyla for any of your questions, because I, I, I feel like, and, and thank you to everyone who's left Super Chat and who's become a member. It really means a lot. For us to be successful, uh, we need your engagement. So thank you to everybody. Let's look. We see Florida Pete in here, Black Rose 11. Thank you for being here. Hi, Lexi. Elaine, good to see you. L. Lorraine as well. Sorry, just got here. Where did they find his remains? It's undetermined exactly the exact location, but it's within Lucen, Utah. Uh, Joey Brooklyn is sending you big hugs, Twyla. Thank you. And Duty Ron, you know what you were touching base on a while ago with people that was being cruel and this, that, and the other. Um, I'll never forget that I was actually sitting in the camper one morning and Candace had came over there to the camper and she was handling business and with phone here and another, you know, handling business here and on her computer trying to handle business. And she got a message from some lady that was being awful to her. I don't even want to waste my breath about this lady, yeah. but she was saying awful, awful things like directly to Candace, like trying yeah. to blame her and you know, she, she just started crying and then she kept handling business and then she would cry. Like it was, it was crazy. And I felt so bad for her. And I was like, you just block them, block mm -hmm. them and don't worry about them because you know, in your heart, you right. know, the amount of horror that uh, Candace received from not only women, but men. Uh, and I'm not even going to mention, like you said, names, you guys know who we're talking about here. And there's so many of them. But one one person in particular that went live like on a nightly basis and berating Candace and berating anybody who interviewed her or tried to help her, I mean that guy is the lowest form of of scum. He is just the the lowest form of life. And I hope karma gets him good. Um, he's a real piece of piece of shit. So um, at the end of the day, we're here to support the family. We're here to talk um, about this case and your, you know, your group, Echo Search Midwest, again, ex was able to be able to go out there and, and do what you, you could and do what you had to do, stayed that week. And it was, I, I was just honored that, that, that you guys went out there and I was so happy. And, and when I talked to Dave, he was like, if we need to go back there, we'll go back in a heartbeat. If we need to go back, we'll go back. He and said the only, something like, the only well, time, think at it. The only time, the only time that I feel like was wasted was when we would take a shower to get dressed to go. Um, we went out, you know, when the sun came up and we came back when the sun was going down. And I don't, I don't think any time that we had out there was wasted. As a matter of fact, we went the, we left from Dylan's property to get back over to uh, closer to the airport so that we didn't have to travel that far that morning or when we was leaving for our flight. But even that day, all the way up until the last minute when it was time for us to leave, we were still out there searching. As a matter of fact, we didn't even want to leave. We wanted to stay a few days longer. Um, but we didn't that. get to. I remember yeah. that. I remember that because I was in contact with you guys the whole time. Um, and I was telling you, be careful out there. Remember, you guys were driving around. I was like, please, please be careful out there. And I asked you, was any of the anybody that you were with was armed? And you were like, don't worry about it, duty, Ron. We got this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> worry, one, duty, of our Ron. Pilots, one of our pilots will not leave. He will not go nowhere that he can't carry with. And believe me, it's 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 helpful, you know. Oh, and believe me, Candace was, oh, she, she little mama there, she... um. She's not gonna play around if somebody. She's a, she's somebody, a picture packer. Yeah. yeah. Um, listen, Sherilyn Schofner was the first person to call, uh, actually, to text me. So, Sherilyn, thank you for notifying me first. Uh, of course, I had a whole bunch that I missed, but she was the first one that I actually caught eyes on about this. Uh, so, thank you, Sherilyn, for uh, messaging me about this um, breaking news, and 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 you know. It, it breaks my heart to report this, but it also, I breathed a sigh of relief for the Cooley and Rounds family. 
that was the first thought. I was just like, I wasn't going to go live. I was actually going to just wait till tomorrow. But I just said, you know what? Let me get, let me go reach out to Twyla. I know Ed's traveling. I didn't even think Ed was going to be able to join us, but he was in a, a Uber driving to the airport. And he said, once I get into the lounge and set up, I'll come in and join you. And, and Ed's like, no, we, we got to talk about this right now. I'm leaving the country. So um, he want we, we have probably 50 videos on Dylan Rounds, at least a good 50 in our playlist. Let me play the rest of this. Twyla, do you still have time to hang out with me or do you got to go? I'll stay. I'll stay a few more minutes. Okay. James Brenner cleaned that shed to the to the point of how it looks now. You know, it doesn't look very clean, maybe to some of us, but he did remove bags out of that shed, according to Dylan's family, and he did take those to a uh, an undisclosed location. And so, all of this would would likely have come into play if if there was a trial. It still could, as far as evidence. Uh, but as I mentioned. According to Dylan's family, as part of some sort of plea deal, Brenner took the authorities to the area where Dylan's body was, and they were able to find it. I spoke with Dylan's family. They, of course, are a lot of emotions tonight. This has been a, um, such a mystery since for two years now. But Candace did ask me to uh, convey, we thank everyone for their support and love. We are grateful we now have Dylan's body and can bring him home as we continue our fight for justice. And uh, unclear when Mr. Brenner will appear in court again. There was a hearing scheduled for this month, but at last check that was delayed. Uh, I love how professional Nate Eaton is. He says, Mr. Brenner, I call him a monster. I call him a demon. I call him a scumbag. I call him a murderer. But I know that because he's a news reporter, he's got to kind of be pro you know, he's got to be proper in what he says, but we don't have to do that here. So James Brenner is a murderous scumbag, 59 years old, uh, I believe. Let me see if my notes are correct. Uh, James Brenner, yeah, 50, 59, 59 years old. Uh, a real piece of work. I'm going to let a little more of this play, and I value your time, Twyla, so I, I want to get right back to you for a second. However, now with the recovery of Dylan's body, it, it could it could be had sooner rather than later. I want to show you on a map just where this place is because it's desolate. And when I say this place, I don't mean where Dylan's remains were actually found other than it was in the Lucin area, but that's a very large area. Uh, but this is where Lucin is. If you pull out here, you can see the Nevada, Utah uh, um, border right here on the left of your screen. And then over here is Montello, Nevada. Dylan went, how far is that trip? Did you guys go into Montello? Uh, we went, we went pretty far. Uh, I got, as a matter of fact, I have our tracks from when we were out there, but we went, we went a good ways. Um, I don't okay. know that did we you guys that run, area, but did you guys run that route that Dylan supposedly took daily to go get food. In Montello is where he supposedly went to go get the food. At um, I have the place written down. I forgot the name of it. Um, but it was a it, it was one of maybe two places where you could go in Montello and get food. It was like a bar restaurant. But anyways, I just just curious, you guys. This looks like a pretty far. Yeah, run. there's not much there. Once we got we got off the air uh, airplane, and we went and we were going to meet uh, Candace. And it's a good thing that we stayed uh, on his property in some campers that the family brung in. Very very nice campers, um, because there's there's absolutely nothing around. Nothing, absolutely nothing around. When we got off the road to get over onto where Dylan's property was, that was the last time I seen uh, asphalt until we left to go back to the airport. Wow. Wow. Yes. All right. So I, I played that a couple of times. Twyla, would you be willing to maybe with me take a couple of questions from the chat? Because there's lots of people here and a lot of people who've been following this case. You also, while I have you here, you and your team uh, went into Tennessee to search for Sebastian Rogers, correct? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So you were invited by TBI. Um, was it multiple agencies that invited you or was it straight out TBI inviting you guys? 
So we got requested through our technology end of it uh, with the drones and the program locate a few weeks back. And me and the drone pilots went in and did our thing and we came back. And then they planned this search and then invited us in. So when we got there, um, as far as I know that I seen with all the people that was there, we were the only search team that was there other than, you know, canine teams. But we were the only search teams. The rest was TBI, FBI. I heard that the Secret Services was there, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, the mayor was there. I actually shook his hand. Um, some of the, I mean, they welcomed us in. They were great. The EMA, every agency, Lebanon, Murfreesboro, Smyrna. I think I've seen every agency surrounding that county there. Like these were high you, up people. You think there was more than a hundred law enforcement personnel? Oh, most definitely without, the, without question. Yes. The news was reporting a hundred. So I was just curious about that. So there, there was yeah. definitely more than a hundred. It looked like there was more than a hundred. Oh yes. It was, I had my, you know, I had the time set for, for my teammates for us to meet at six or six thirty. I can't remember which one it was. And, all of us had traveled into the hotel that day with tornadoes and bad, bad weather. I mean, one of our new members, she drove eight and a half hours, I think. It took her a little bit longer because uh, of the storms, but weather around all areas was not good that day. So we all got there, and then I had all of our teammates uh, meet in the lobby at like 530, and then we were over at the command location at about 10 minutes to 6 and we deployed from there. We were there both days with law enforcement. We have had some of the best TBI agents assigned to us. Um, we we was there to do drones and sonar for water. And okay. I can tell you that we, we covered a lot. And everywhere we went, there was agents everywhere within that neighborhood. Uh, all the way out up to three miles, I think, while we were there, there were agents everywhere. Will you guys go back there if you're asked to come back to do searching again? Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Me and the TBI agent, um, one of the TBI agents that I've been in contact with, you know, we speak to each other every other day, if not every day. And most definitely if they have something else, there's no doubt in my mind that they will definitely bring us back. And Twyla, to clear up some misconceptions, because uh, we're going to do a show tomorrow night as well at nine o'clock uh, on, on Sebastian specifically but um you guys started early on with tbi assisting with um drone uh with drone footage and doing doing some flying missions how early on he's been missing now two months right so how long uh, along in the search for sebastian did you guys join in was it early or was it midway uh i would say it, it's in, it was in between uh, I don't want to speak of exactly when, because there was things that was going on. You know what I mean? But right, I got you. It, it was in between there. I will tell you that we were we were contacted and requested by the TBI. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know you had mentioned that. Um, I have some footage from Candace Cooley and um, Dylan's dad. Um, he did an interview with Lauren Crime about a year ago after James Brenner was arrested. I think this interview is important to play, and I want to play it in its entirety. It's about 14 minutes, but I know you can't stay for this, Twyla. So um, I think we covered what we had to cover here, and I wanted to go to you for any final thoughts or anything that you might want to say uh, in case you know we didn't cover anything. I know you've said a lot during the course of tonight. Just uh, treat people the way you want to be treated and always know that you're not alone. If one of your family members or something, your loved ones or even your worst enemy comes up missing, you know, everybody deserves to be found, especially if they, you know, in different situations, everybody deserves to be found. Um, just treat people the way you want to be treated and just just don't give up. Don't give up on hope. You know what I mean? always be kind and do something for the next person smile at the next person because you never know what they're going through behind the scenes and duty ron maybe you know in the future or whatever you probably can't do it now one armed but you could probably pay, play back um or put up there the when when justin was on and let people that's new here 
hear what he had to say or, or just go back on duty ron's channel and watch the, candace has been on there justin's been on there but my final thoughts is treat people the way you want to be treated don't always believe everything that you hear there is a lot of evil malicious people that are out there that say really some really horrible things the internet is a tough place if you don't have a tough skin it's not a good place to be and putting yourself out there um but in the ca case like this with kansas cooley she had no choice her son disappeared justin rounds had no choice and he has that fear of being in front of cameras he's not a guy that likes to be on the camera but you know what he they did it he did it for his son and when i had him on as a guest he was visibly uncomfortable on my show but once we started talking he got real he got real comfortable and but he did tell me privately the only reason i came on is because twyla said you were a good guy <laughs> so I, I talked to him i talked to him and i told him i said i'll be right there you'll be you'll love duty ron he's great i said he's not gonna hound you or none of that right right and i never did i mean i i did message with him you know in the months that followed and and candace me messaged me just maybe two three months ago uh, expressing some frustration and so forth. And, and you know what, anytime that she ever texts me, I always answer her. And she always knew that my channel was a place for her to come and not be attacked. When there was craziness going on surrounding all around her, I told her, you could come and you can talk. I don't care what anybody says about me or what anybody says about you. They're not going to be able to coexist here within our community, but they could do it outside the community, but it doesn't matter. What matters is is the the task at hand, which was trying to find your boy. And that's all that mattered. That's all that mattered to me is getting her voice heard. And I didn't care what she had to say. I wanted her to say what she wanted to say. And it was not my place to judge her based on what she was saying. You know, and, and she had some really tough, um, tough words for Elko County Sheriff. You know, and 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 the things that they didn't do, and I, I just said, you know what, you're witnessing it firsthand. I got to believe what you're saying is happening. But Box Elder, you know, Sheriff uh, Potter, she said he was nothing but a professional with them. So kudos to the Box Elder, the, who's the lead in this in this case. And, and I remember she wanted the FBI to take over, or one of the federal agencies to take over FBI, preferably. And that wasn't happening. But look, here we are today. Fast forward. Twyla, I want to thank you for taking an hour out of your time. You're a mother of, you know, many kids. Sometimes I hear a lot. It sounds like a whole school is there in the background. So you juggle a lot of uh, a lot of things. You do a lot and you drop a lot of things when it comes to searching for the missing. And that's why I love, love you and your team so much. Dave, Tony, everybody from behind the scenes. I know I miss people's names, but the whole team, I freaking love EquiSearch and I would do anything for you guys. We're going to be doing a fundraiser for these folks. I'm going to link their, uh, their uh, organization in the description. Give me about an hour after this is over because I'm one-handed, but I'm going to link a description, a way for you guys to support people like this who go out and search for the missing we're going to do a one or two hour live stream where we do fundraising in the future for EquiSearch so they can continue to do their great work. So please, if you can support them, tax deductible 501c3 nonprofit organization, they search for the missing, but they need your money to be able to go out and get hotel rooms and get airfare and to get flights and send resources and people all over the country. That stuff is not free. So please, uh, if you can, even even a dollar. If a thousand people send a dollar, that's a thousand bucks. So thank you, thank you all. Uh, and don't send it here on the super chats. Send it directly to EquiSearch. All right, Twyla. We 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 greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it because with the technology end of this, and even our foot searchers, you know, my teammates, they work. Some of them can work seven days a week. And then when we get these cases, there's so many cases that's that's coming in. And, you know, Dave stresses and worries, you know, are we going to keep going and this, that, and the other. We're actually working on, they had a, a Zoom call tonight about a fundraiser that they're doing up 
in Ohio, like in person. And then Duty Ron, he he's great with doing the fundraisers for us. And, you know, Duty Ron, I was thinking I also want to let anybody that's in here or that may see this, if you're struggling mentally or you just need somebody to talk to or reach out to or, or just need somebody to sit and hold the phone, listen while you scream or get out whatever, I will not judge you. Reach out to Duty Ron. Please get my email, my phone number, whatever, and just call and say, hey, you don't even have to tell me who you are. Just be like, hey, I seen you on Duty Ron, and I just need you to listen, and I'll just sit there and listen as long as you need to because people don't understand that depression is real, and, you know, sometimes we all need each other mm. when we don't even know we need each other. Amen to that, sister. Amen to that. All right, Twyla, I'll let you run. Uh, it was a great uh, hour sitting here and chatting it up about Dylan Rounds. Again, his remains have been recovered. Lost is not alone. He's now brought home to his family. So thank you for being here. I, I want to show this piece. It's 14 minutes long. So whoever wants to stick around to show, listen to this piece, it's from Lauren Crime. And both Dylan Rounds' parents talk on this. And it's right after James Brenner is charged with murder, um, aggravated murder, you know, no arraignment or anything like that. But he was officially t taken into custody and they talk about the case. So I think that this is important for us to listen to because it, it really goes over a lot of the things that they were fighting for. Twyla, I love you. I'll talk to you tomorrow and I'll see you tomorrow night, nine o'clock. OK, feel better, duty, Ron. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My shoulder's okay. throbbing. Make sure you get some good sleep because we're going to be on tomorrow night, nine o'clock. Okay, I will. Bye-bye. Love you, Twyla. Bye. Love you. All right, there she goes, Twyla. All right, Lauren Crime, who wants to see this? Put a one in the chat if you want to see it. Put a two if you'd rather not see it. But this is 14 minutes of good, solid information coming from both parents of Dylan Rounds. Let me know if you want to see it. One in the chat if you want to see it. Two if you'd rather me pass on it and then end it right here. We could do it. Whatever you guys want. I'm here to please. I want to please you. All right. I haven't seen the number two yet. I know that that's coming, but it's been an overwhelming amount of number ones. So let, let's let it rip. People don't realize how of a fight when I say how much of a win these charges are because this has been such an extreme fight to get to this point. Nearly one year after 19-year-old Dylan Rounds went missing from his Utah farm, charges are filed in his murder. His parents now speaking out, saying the charges are long overdue. It's about time. We've it it is about time that to know how long they've had what they have infuriates us even more. Last week, 59-year-old James Brenner was charged with one count of aggravated murder and one count of abuse or desecration of a human body. The charges come months after Brenner was named a person of interest in Rounds' case. He crossed paths, paths with a really bad, horrible gut that this is, I don't know what I can say other than it's unfortunate. According to a probable cause affidavit, investigators recovered a video from Rounds' phone that led to Brenner's arrest. This is the video that Ed and I have been talking about. There is a video, a digitally forensic download that was conducted off of uh, Dylan's phone, which we do not know the exact contents of it. It says it's a video showing the defendant, James Brenner, with blood stains on his arms and his shirt as he's cleaning a gun. The shirt, which is defendant, which the defendant is wearing in the video, was analyzed, and the victim, Dylan Rounds, DNA was found on the shirt. So this is a bloody video of the perpetrator in this case, James Brenner, with Dylan Rounds DNA all over him. Court documents read in part, quote, the video showed the defendant with blood stains on his arms and shirt as he was cleaning a gun. The shirt, which defendant is wearing in the video, was analyzed and the victim's DNA was found on the shirt. Rounds' father, Justin Rounds, says news of the video was bittersweet. It's not good to at least finally have charges pressed on him to find out. It didn't feel good to find out about the video, but it but it did, uh, the video of him cleaning the blood off. 
off of the gun in his hands. I don't know. I can't really describe it. It wasn't happy. The 19-year-old was last heard from in May of last year. So it was on May 28th, which was Saturday, that he called his grandma and said he had to get his um, truck in the shed. Rounds' mother, Candace Cooley, says her son called his grandmother to talk about some farming plans for the day. After that, he never made another call. And the reason it had to go in the shed is because he still had some triticale seed in it and his tarps had some holes. So if he didn't put it in the shed, then the rain gets into the seed, the seed sprouts, and it's no good. You lose your So that's why it had to get in the shed. Um, from there, he said he'd call her back. Um, he reached out. He called Brenner about, I can't remember the exact time, but we know he was at the gate to get onto the property. Um, and then that was it. He was never heard from again. At the time of his disappearance, Brown was working on his farm in Lucen, Utah, near the borders of Idaho and Nevada. His parents tell us he often traveled for work. Dylan chased his work. He had his stationary homes with me and his father, but he chased his work, uh, you know, just like so many custom people do. I mean, there's, there's custom crews all over this area for farming. There's people who come clear from Kansas to cut grain in Idaho. It is such a common thing that people don't realize. Um, it happens all the time. Though he owned property in Lucen, Rounds did not live there. Dylan absolutely did not leave in Lucen. He had a camp trailer there that he would stay in if he was planting or he had his pivot on and needed to watch the water so he had a place to sleep. He didn't live there. He would be back and forth. He'd, he'd stay more in eastern Idaho. Both Rounds' parents tell Law and Crime Network he was a dedicated farmer who dreamed of working since he was a child. Dylan just, he, from the time he could toddle around with his dad and his grandpa, um, that was just it. We knew, you know, he was going to be a farmer and that's what he was going to do. I mean, he did, his hobbies were farming. It sounds kind of odd. It is kind of odd a little bit, but that's what he liked. He, since he was little, that's all he ever wanted to do. So when he turns... I want to just say this. We do not know uh, what the deal is that was made for him. You know, um, we're going to hear, as Nate Eaton said, in the coming days or maybe, you know, a week from now, or I don't know how quickly they'll work on this, but we're going to hear about this, the charges, whether they're upgraded or whatever the case may be. But we at this point do not know, and I will not report on speculation as it pertains to a deal that was brokered. James Brenner. Whatever deal it was, was enough for this family to, and I'm sure that they, they, the DA probably worked with the family and talked to them. Hey, we're going to offer this. I hope that they did. I hope that they conferred with uh, Candace and, and Dylan's dad, Justin, and said, this is what we're going to offer uh, him to, and, and, and they probably accepted it. Um, and, and but I don't know if that's how it went down, but that's how usually it's done. They confer with the family. Sixteen and got to go do that stuff. Like it was better than. Well, that's all he ever wanted to do. So when he turned sixteen and got to go do that stuff, like it was better than getting his driver's license, just to be able to go work on a farm. But he was just a worker. He was just a good-hearted worker. That's all he, you know, ever wanted. Neither parent felt unsafe with Rounds working in Lucen, saying he was more than competent to run a farm on his own. Dylan was 19 years old, 10 months. So all that that Dylan did, he wasn't, he wasn't just some little 19 year old kid. Dylan was pretty go getter and didn't, hard work didn't bother him. And people might think we just say that because it's her son. It's, it was the absolute truth. Strong-headed, strong-willed. He had his goals. He had his plans. Um, you know, ever since he was a kid, it was all about tractors and farming. Cooley says she last saw her son on May 23rd, the Monday before he was last seen. Typical Dylan. Blowing the house. I'm finishing Independence Valley. I'm going to go get my stuff and head to Lucent and plant. Just... Nothing, you know, just typical Dylan. Just don't know he's coming, pulls in the driveway fast, jumps out of his pickup. Guess what, Mom? You'll never guess what. That was always, always, always had a story.
everything had to have, I mean, he wasn't going to call you just to see how you were doing. It always had to have a story. Like, guess what? That's how the conversation, you'll never guess what happened. You'll never guess what I see. That was just him. But days later, she received a concerning call. It was Monday that um, Dylan's best friend called me and said, have you heard from Dylan? And I said, well, no, I talked to him on Thursday. And he says, well, kind of told me Karen said I talked to him this day. And so I called him and I'd called and texted him a couple of times and didn't hear anything back over that weekend, which was nothing out of the usual. I knew he was planting. It was nothing for Dylan to break a phone not have a charger, you know, nothing out of the ordinary until myself, his father, grandma, grandpa, friends, everybody kind of started talking and nobody had heard from him. And that was not normal. Um, so that's when we headed, we all headed to Lucid to go see what was going on. After the call, both Cooley and Rounds went to their son's property in Lucid. I called in a missing persons report uh, in Park Valley, which is about 50 miles from Dylan's farm. Because I just knew, I just knew something was wrong. At first, Round says he thought there may have been an accident. I started to think maybe there was a farming accident or something. Maybe a tractor was stuck or maybe it broke down because it's such a big area. If his phone was dead. Maybe he was somewhere there. But when they recovered Dylan's boots, both parents say they knew something was wrong. Because he wouldn't have left his boots there. They weren't old. They weren't bad. They were I mean, old and worn out for Dylan would be basically his toes sticking through a hole. And it would have <laughs> Falling apart. There would have been no reason for those boots to. You know, it's funny that they're talking about this because when Candace came on and, 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 and Justin was on the, on the show with me, they, they mentioned about the boots and they were like, you know what? Um, he would never discard his boots. And, and his dad just said it unless his toes were sticking out of it. So that's the kind of kid he was. And 19 years young, 19 years old, that's a young teenager, right? But he was many years above his age. And yes, New Jersey Robin, my shoulder is throb throbbing. I took, I, I was off the pain medicines, but tonight when this news broke, I, I took a half a pill just to keep the, the, the edge off. And I knew my shoulder would be throbbing and it, it is right now. So I'm going to get ready to wrap this up because... I'm, I'm in agony right now. I'm going to put the ice machine on upstairs and sit back and watch the um, watch the news at 11, my time. But this is almost over, so let's continue with this and listen to the parents, and then we'll wrap it up with a with a prayer for um, the the Cooley and the Rounds family. In my mind, at all. But it's when we found the boots. When we found the boots, there is no other explanation. For them to be out there besides Brenner put him out there. And the only way you would get Dylan's boots off of him is if he was not alive to keep you from doing it. And that's when we knew. Cooley says officials with the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office were on scene when the boots were recovered. Looking back, she says the early stages of the investigation were, quote, terrible. I truly believe laziness, just shrugging it off. This 19-year-old kid got sick of farming and walking away. He just walked away. They wouldn't listen to us. Um, truly, I, I don't know what could go through their head to make them do what they've done. It's really frustrating. I couldn't figure out why they didn't take it more serious than they were. I, I just couldn't understand it. Cooley tells Lawn Crime Network the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office didn't take her son's case seriously. They just acted like it was normal. The Sheriff's Department, like... In, in those first days, this is what I was talking about, how disgusting and frustrating this was for Candace and the entire Cooley and Rounds family. They're like just beyond frustrating, Schmitty, beyond frustrating. But she, Candace has been jumping up and down and shouting from the rooftops exactly what she's saying here on Law and Crime Network since the beginning. Days and, and we will stand by it. They literally, they mocked us. They laughed at us. They lied to us. They told us, you know, they tell us, well, it takes us two and a half hours to drive out here. So you're telling us our son's not worth two and a half hours? You signed up to protect and serve this county. And this is part of this county. I don't care if it's a five hour drive. This is what you signed up for. Rounds has several theories for why. Amen to that, mama. Amen. The case was handled the way it was, but still can't fully understand. It was a holiday weekend, and 
I think that they kind of thought, well, maybe he's out partying with friends or doing something. They didn't know who he was, you know, really what he was about. He wasn't about that. Um, so maybe for a few days, that's what they were thinking. Why it took so long for charges and stuff, I don't know. Early on, both of Rounds' parents suspected James Brenner may have been involved in their son's disappearance. So then when we got up there, you know, Brenner was telling uh, myself and my husband about how, you know, Dylan couldn't fight his way out of anything. He shouldn't have even had a gun. He didn't know how to use it. All he could do was throw it at somebody. At the time he went missing, Brenner was squatting in a trailer kept on the property where Rounds kept his grain truck. See, I mentioned the squatting before, and, and Nate Eaton, I, I love him, but he was saying, oh, this is this was J uh, James Brenner's trailer. He was not. That was not his trailer. He was squatting there. He was in there because he had nowhere else to live. He was transient. Uh, Julie, I'm going to post the link in the description after the live is over. I'm one-handed, so I'm going to be able to copy and paste it from a previous live stream. But you got to give me some time. I promise I'll post it in the description. Just Julie V, give me just some a little bit of, uh, a little bit of time. But yeah, uh, James Brenner was squatting in that trailer on Dylan's property. Cooley theorizes that her son made Brenner mad and led him to quote snap. Dylan made him mad because he didn't answer his phone. So Dylan still took the gate down, even though it wasn't his property. And he had this wild horse that he'd tame that he always wanted to keep in. And Dylan probably left the gate down. And that just made him mad, pissed him off that morning. And that's what he did. Justin Rounds agrees, saying a motive may stem. This was a year ago, folks. This is the parents talking one whole year ago. From a buildup over time. He had nothing to gain from it whatsoever. I think like Kayla says a snap moment, I think he had a temper and I think that maybe there was some jealousy and you know maybe Dylan I mean he probably has said probably I'm just guessing I don't know but I mean, he probably had to have a little bit of contention with Dylan and Dylan was not the type to just put his head down and back down. He probably said something to him maybe even weeks before just kind of got under Jim's skin and then the small moment happened. I don't, I don't know. Rounds tells Long Crime Network he was introduced to Brenner years prior. A couple of years ago, I introduced myself to Brenner. He was at my grandpa's house. My son had bought a bunch of pigs. And across the road from my grandpa's house was a vet clinic. And Jim Brenner was there. I was pretty upset that they bought the pigs and brought them to that property. And I was pretty upset when I left. And Dylan texted me and says, Jim Brenner's going to shoot you. And he's going to do, he's, he doesn't like to be talked to like that. I said, well, then I'll have to come talk to him. And I came back to talk to him at the farm and he was with my dad. And my dad was calming him down. Calmed me down and it kind of just blew over. He says Brenner had negatively spoken about his son in the past. Jim was talking to a kid that works for me. I was watching him on the cameras. He was telling the kid what a spoiled kid Dylan was. I doesn't treat anything very good. You can just see a lot of jealousy in him. But I called Dylan and I said, you know, Jim Renner isn't your friend. He's sitting there talking about it. And he said, ah, oh, Jim's just kind of an ass. You could tell when we got to the shed that Jim was, there was jealousy of Dylan. He was talking about how Dylan was bragging about how much money he had. Cooley says Brenner was named a suspect in the case in July, but was not charged in her son's murder until 10 months after he went missing. That's when she learned about the video showing Brenner cleaning off a gun. The cold-bloodedness part of it. The, I'm going to go in and clean myself up. I've, took, I've taken his cell phone already. Um, just the thoughts of, well, now I'm going to take his boots. Like almost, almost stripping my son of his pride. And then standing face to face with us for days on end and never blinking an eye. Remember folks, James Brenner stood face to face with Candace Cooley and Justin Rounds in the days and weeks that followed when he was missing. And he told them stories. He, he told them all different kinds of stories. And there was, you know, searches done and law enforcement all over the place. 
and the the Cooley and Rounds family were telling Box Elder and uh, Elko County Sheriffs, James Brenner has a warrant. Why don't you go lock him up? He's got a warrant for an unrelated thing. At least you can lock him up and put him on, get him in and, and interview and interrogate him. And they didn't lock him up. He was there on the property. I remember this like it was yesterday. Candace told me this on the phone, and then she talked about it on a live stream with me, that they had James Brenner in front of them with an, a felony warrant, and they didn't lock him up. That pissed them off so bad. And for those of you looking for donations for the funeral, I don't know that there is any place to donate. If there is a, a bona fide place to donate, I will post it in the description. But as of right now, I don't know of uh, anything like that that's going on. So if you want to donate, just hold on to it. And then when I get in contact with Candace or somebody who's close to the family, I'm sure Twyla will reach out uh, and we get the bona fide verifiable information, I'll post it. But until then, I'm not going to just post stuff that I don't get secondhand. I'm going to make sure it's it's legit. But yeah, so James Brenner was there talking in their faces, and they knew something was up. This guy was a drunk. This guy was oh, a, a drug drug user, and he was a transient. He had nowhere to live, and um, and he had animosity towards uh, Dylan. And that was documented. He, they have him on video camera, video and audio, saying that he's a uh, you know that he's got a lot of money and he, he's this that and the other. His pride, and then standing face to face with us for days on end, and never blinking an eye, never having a nervous tick, never acting uncomfortable, nothing. After Rounds' disappearance, multiple searches of his loosened property were made. It was so gut wrenching, and we were we were so lost, and we didn't know what to do, and we didn't know where to search. Both Cooley and Rounds believe they may soon find their son's body, likely after the snow thaws. You know, like I said last summer, we were out there, we were disorganized, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just desperately looking for our son. Um, this year, when we head out there, we've got some really specialized teams that are going to come out and help. Um, we've got some some elite um, ex military. Guys that are going to come out, it's going to be organized. Yeah, I'm confident we'll find his body. It might take a little bit, but she got to put positive vibes on her. Rounds visited his son's property this week. He says it's a way to connect with his son. At the same time, he's still coming to terms with the loss. Went out and looked at his farm. Just, it's a horrible place to get away to. I, mean, I just wanted to get away and just kind of, it's real peaceful out there. There was nobody out there, no noise, no nothing. It's, I don't know, kind of connect with him. I don't even know I fully grasped what's happened sometimes. Yesterday it'd be pretty hard coming back from Lucien. Very sad. Um... So that's going to conclude the coverage for tonight. Um, Dylan Rounds, his remains recovered. James Brenner, the perpetrator in the crime, in custody, went with the local sheriff who was in charge of the investigation, along with the district attorney, out to a remote location in Lucen, Utah. We don't know the exact location, and his remains were recovered today, April 9th. 2024, almost two years after his disappearance and a whole bunch of ups and downs in this case. We're going to continue to cover this. We're going to continue to speak on this. I hope you guys um, please like and subscribe to this community. I'm going to link the description to donate to Equisearch Midwest in the description. My shoulder's throbbing. I got to get out of here. I'm going to put some ice on this thing. This is what it's all about. I want to just call for a moment of silence. If you guys could put prayer emojis in the chat, a moment of silence for this young man, Dylan Rounds. May he continue to rest in peace and his family get some sense of closure. We never get closure when our 
children are ripped away from us violently. So let's get a moment of silence and prayer emojis in the chat for Dylan Rounds, and we will end this live stream here with this picture. Thank you all for joining. Good night from New York City, and we'll see you on the next one tomorrow night, 9 p.m., Twyla, Dave Rader, Equisearch Midwest. We're going to talk about Sebastian Rogers, the search, and what they did, and what we're going to continue to do going forward on that case. We're not paying attention to the white noise and all the hoopla that's going on. We're going to be talking about searching for the missing tomorrow night on Crime Time with Duty Ron. Good night. Thank you for joining and God bless.